In some cultures, happiness is the only belief. In our society, 1 in 10 persons are depressed. From all those statistics, 1 in 100 will attempt suicide in their lifetime. And if those numbers are eye-opening enough, America isn't even the top country for depression. Not even the top three. Why are developed countries so much sadder than undeveloped? We have life's essentials at our fingertips. The highest technology, evolutionizing human rights, and so many equal opportunities for everyone. Yet Finland is ranked 80 places higher based on a poll of happiest countries by Forbes. With everything the media throws at us, smiling advertisements, and brightly colored billboards, why are we so damn depressed? There's been many recent studies across the U.S. from the fast past few years linking multiple teen suicides to social media. Bullying was the main reason, but psychiatrists believe there is also a strong subconscious re- reason to the media-related blues. These theses believe our minds are always in some sort of judgmental, scrutinizing kind of self-betterment, and seeing all these pictures of flawless Photoshop models with two perfect bodies creates an unrealistic interpretation of beauty in our minds, thus creating an unwinnable winnable battle. Facebook is one of the worst offenders of media-induced depression. How is seeing what your relatives ate for lunch causing such a problem? It is not necessarily the mindless posts, but the sharing of anything and all important life events your friends are having and you're not. Say someone got a job promotion. Now, you're comparing your recent employed feats with theirs and suddenly it puts you in a damper, puts a damper on your mindset. Even though you might not agree directly with that statement, green jealousy always begins with someone having something you don't. And social media is the epitome of posting your greatness to banish others. So, with all these societal reasons for for depression, why isn't America doing anything about it? Or, are we too engrossed in posting and tweeting to open our eyes to the real world and realize we're missing out on true happiness? As this generation's teenagers, we are the new guinea pigs of the new modern world. We are the first to test and use social media for communication rather than the old-fashioned face-to-face, and that physical separation is a factor to our rankings of depression. In the Biophilia Hypothesis by Stephen R. Kellert, it states, Human beings have a wired need to be around other living things. In A Thousand Splendid Sons, Lila is, co- Lila is finally confronted with her acceptance of Miriam, and thus choosing that happiness of sharing and apathy. Throughout the girls' journeys, we were introduced to the idea of Tariq, a long love for, for Lila and his mental presence in her, kept her, kept, keeps her spirit stronger throughout the book. When Tariq resurfaces, Lila is faced with a decision to stick with her abusive husband or follow her happiness and risk the brutality. In the end, Lila, ever so cliche-like, follows her heart. As an older sister, I am constantly cradling my sister, rocking her and telling her it'll be alright. That someone at the end of an iPhone isn't nearly as painful as walking miles to fetch water every morning for your family, and that seems to spark a revolution in her every time. In our day-to-day life, we are comparing ourselves to others, but when we compare our lives to something much more, re- much more real, rather a magazine, that gives us a broader new perspective. Life is also extremely cruel, taking almost as easy as it gives, and that is the hardest, that is the hardest obstacle we as humans have to face, loss. Mother recently lost her own mother last summer. During her funeral, her brothers were whispering to her, it's okay, she'd want us to be happy. It's what she wants, I know it. And that revelation was enough for her, for the woman to shed her last tears, pull her shoulders back and say goodbye to her mother. This type of loss could seem so gut-wrenching that walking out of it unchanged is unfathomable. These types of losses are sad, are sadly just a part of life and that is a sort of acceptance is hard to ask of people to comprehend, but also as a harsh reality. Strength is interpreted through happiness and a person's ability to come out of a situation unfazed. In Extremely Loud and Incredibly Close, Oscar's mom tells Oscar to be happy again. And as a kid, he doesn't understand the meaning of revelations, but his mom is right. Any loved one would have wished sadness upon their family. Happiness is a mental decision to pick up and move on. Move on from pain, move on, move on and above bullies, move on from the rough patches and start something new. So why isn't America advertising that? Happiness, the cheapest medicine, easiest to obtain and can never ever be abused. Why are we giving it to sadness so we can choose happiness?